Okay, in this section what I'd like to do is talk about the different approaches there are to testing functional programs. From an ad hoc um, test as you go approach to a more, more formal, a more um, powerful mechanism of property based testing. Um, and let's, let's see how that works out. We've got four levels of testing. As I say, the simplest approach is to test as we go. The code we're testing is in the, um, the square at the right. And what we do in the shell, as we go, we compile the program and we write some tests just to check that the program is doing what we, we would expect it to. And this is often what functional programmers do. What's unfortunate is we tend not to record those tests in our, in our programs. So we do the testing as we do the development, but then they get lost. But of course we could record them in a, as ad hoc unit tests so here are the tests again. What we could do is add them as mod tests to the module. And then we'd have test one doing the first comparison, test two doing the second. And then we have recorded what our tests are. And then of course we can do regression testing if we were to change or extend the definition of take. So that at least records the tests. And then we have to apply the tests by hand by calling test one and test two. Now, a test framework or a unit test framework allows us to get some support for doing what we've just done in an ad hoc way. And EUnit is the unit testing framework for Erlang, um, and it comes as part of the standard Erlang distribution. And what you can see here is the way that the tests that we've written so far are written in EUnit. We can test for equality, we can also test for raising an error, raising an exception, for example. So we can do positive and neg negative testing, which is rather more difficult in a completely ad hoc way. Well, I guess you have to catch the exception. We've not talked about that. So EUnit provides a framework in which we can perform tests. Now, here are our two tests. And if we call test colon test, that will call every function in the module we're working with called something underscore test. So it will automatically call those functions and it will report that the two tests, all the two tests have passed. If on the other hand, we, we said that we expected take one of three, four, five to be the empty list, we'd get a failure report. We would get um, a report that we'd looked for the empty list, whereas um, the value we, we received was the list with just three in it. So you can see the report tells us one test failed and two tests passed. So it bundles up, it automates some of the more boilerplate -y things to do with testing. Now, of course, there's a lot more to a unit than I've shown you here. And the thing to do is to take a look at the documentation online. It allows you to set up tests, set up a, a, um, a system before you perform tests, to tear down after the tests have been performed, and so on. But I'll leave you to look at that. It's just simply to say that EUnit is there as the framework. There's more information about EUnit as well in the book that Francesco Cesarini and I wrote. There's more about it in Fred Eber's book about um, Learn You Some Erlang. Now, finally, our final approach is what's called property-based testing, which has been particularly successful for functional programming languages, including Erlang. And property-based testing is based on two things. What we do is test general properties of functions rather than just values. And I'll say a bit more about what I mean about a general property in a minute. And we test those properties using randomly generated input data. So, we say we expect the system to have this property and we check that with a whole collection of randomly va generated values. Now the Qvic quick check tools represent state of the art of this for Erlang. It's a commercial tool, but there's a freely available version called quick check mini and that's available at the, um, at the URL you see there. There's also a clone of quick check called proper, which is available with an open source license and I've put a link here to a, a nice gentle introduction to doing property-based testing. Um, 
Property based testing was originated for Haskell. It was, um, and our 10 years on from the paper first being published, it was um, honoured for being the most influential paper at the International Conference on Functional Programming that year. There are clones of QuickCheck for many languages. Um, if you look at the Wikipedia page on QuickCheck, you can find out more information about those. But let's look at a particular example. So here we've included the QuickCheck library. We include EQC, include EQC.HRL. And what you see here is a statement of a property. And the property we've got here is that length of take n of x's should equal n. So it says if we take n elements from a list, we ought to have n elements. And the property says this should hold for all natural numbers and for all lists of natural numbers. So that's the statement of the property. Um, let's see what happens if we try and test that property. We see there's a failure. And what you see is a counterexample. And in fact, that counterexample is the simplest possible one. So the, the process of shrinking to find a simpler counterexample just leaves us with the same, um, the same data. And what this says is that the, the number one and the empty list give the result false. Because if you take one element from the empty list, you don't get something of length one. And that's because we didn't get the property right. It's not always easy to write properties. Let's, let's have a think about um, what, we should, what we should be saying. Why don't we try this? This says something rather more subtle. It says that the length of take n x's is the minimum of the length of x's, because we can't take any more, any more elements than there are in x's, and n. So it's not always n. If we have an empty list, the length of take n empty list will be zero, whatever the value of n. So there's our property. We're now saying that for all n and for all lists, we expect that to hold. And again, we're saying it for all natural numbers. And now if we apply quick check, we see that it passes 100 tests. So that tells us that the property holds at least in 100 random cases. Now it doesn't tell us it, it always holds, we might have to do a thousand, but typically a hundred will catch most errors. Um, and you can always run quick check for longer, you can, you can um, tune it in various ways, but that gives you an idea of the way that property-based testing works. You state a property like, and here it relates length and min and, and take, but it's really a property about take, I guess, um, and allows us to see if that holds in a whole collection of, of, um, of random cases. Now let's just think about how we define some properties. Often we have to, the nice thing about a quick check is that you define properties in Erlang itself. So what I'm doing at the top of, of this slide is to define when one list is an initial segment of another. Um, I'm saying, the empty list is an initial segment of any list. X cons X's is an initial segment of X cons Y's if X's is an initial segment of Y's. And otherwise, the answer is false. And then you can, we've got two properties here. We'd certainly expect the first property, initial prop, to be true. We'd expect X's always to be an initial segment of X's plus plus Y's. But if you try out initial property two, you'll see that doesn't hold. X's is not an initial segment of Y's plus plus X's. But one of the nice things we can do is once we've defined initial, we can say that take N X's is an initial segment of X's itself. And we would expect that property to be true, and in, indeed it is. So, Together with the property of the length, that gives us one defining property of take. If we define drop as, if you like, the converse of, of take, drop drops n elements from a list, or as many elements as it can from a list, and we have a nice property relating take and drop. It says, if you take n elements of x's 
and then join that together with dropping n elements from x's, you get x's back. So take and drop together, split the list in two, and if we join them back together with the plus plus, the list concatenation operator, we get back where we started. And that's another property for us to test. You can think about whether that property will hold for lists colon split. I think you might see that it won't hold and you need to modify it slightly because list colon split is a bit more picky about the relationship. You can only take up to length x's many elements from a list x's. Whereas with our definitions of take and drop, you can take as many as you wish. So if you want to take things further, it's possible to define more complex properties. They don't just have to be equations. It's, proper, it's possible to define more complex generators for all sorts of types like Booleans, but also structured tuples lists and so on. Um, and it's also possible to test stateful systems. We just talked about the functional aspect of, of, of um, systems here, but you can test stateful systems in a similar way. So just to summarize what we've talked about here, four approaches to testing, often the one that gets done while you develop is testing as you go in the Erlang shell. You maybe record some of those as ad hoc unit tests in your files. You maybe turn those ad hoc tests into tests within a test framework. That again makes regression testing that much easier. But you may then decide to move away from unit tests to writing property-based tests, which test the validity of for all properties on random values. Um, and as I say, there are details there about how you can download QuickCheck, or if you Google for proper, you can get information about that too. So that's it, and um, I hope that, that gives you a, um, an overview at least of the sort of things we can do for testing functional programs written in Erlang.